Greetings, everyone. I am Dr. Vania De Paoli. I am a senior lecturer faculty at the Cleveland State University. And my main responsibilities include mainly the teaching of lecture and laboratory courses. Today, I would like to speak with you about this initiative I have been proposing to help boost students' grades in my course. And the title of my presentation is Adaptive Beauty Homework Assignments Boost Grade Outcomes in an Organic Chemistry Course. So adaptive assignments, they are thought as a good uh, resource for helping boosting the grades of uh, students in organic chemistry course. Essentially, what those assignments do is to recognize the students' knowledge gaps and correcting that by proposing alternative uh, exercises. So essentially, it's a software recognition. The students um, receive a homework or assignment question based on the answer. The software detects those learning uh, knowledges. Okay, and I propose these corrective questions. Now, adaptive assignments, they are available in different commercial platforms. Pretty much every major publisher um, have homework systems that are including those um, adaptive assignments. Okay, in my experience, I find that those um, assignments, they tend to be quite frustrating. Essentially, because the time required for a student to uh, complete this assignment is not predictable. If a student starts to fall behind on the proposed questions because of corrective measurements, the assignments can, be, can uh, take a very long time to be completed, which leads to students' frustration, especially for those students that need most of the help. Then, with this in mind, and also because most of those platforms require the students to pay for a fee, I decided about one year ago in the spring of 2022 to apply for a textbook affordability grant from the Michael Schwartz Library to create um, those adaptive um, assignments that target the student's knowledge. Essentially, all of those assignments are built in Blackboard, and uh, the only um, the only extra resource that I need for the for creating those assignments is a ChemDraw software from Perkin Elmer that my department does have a license for, um, and those were used to create the chemical structures necessary for the assignments. I created a, a total of nine different assignments. Okay, um, and those assignments, each one of them have a pool, a large pool of questions. Okay, and they were first released in the fall semester for two of my sections. And currently I have been using those assignments in the spring 23 semester with one extra section um, of my course. Essentially, uh, those nine assignments that target specific concepts of my first semester organic chemistry that are required for build up the foundation to discuss um, my course. Okay, so those assignments they were released uh, to students as soon as I cover those topics in class. Some of the assignments they have some adaptive releases. What exactly this means? If one assignment um, is dependent of a different to a topic covering a different assignment, then the student must complete one of the assignments to a certain percentage before um, the next assignment to become visible for um, the students. So the students had, in fact, several weeks to complete all of those assignments. Okay, but it, they did not have immediate feedback uh, other than um, the overall grade received uh, for the assignment. Um, so essentially, uh, the students would see their scores, they would identify that there was a problem. Um, I was hoping for creating discussions uh, of the students with uh, me as instructor, the tutors, uh, any support uh, that they could have. Uh, the books uh, on, on its own, but they would not have 
a clear answer of your question is wrong because you did this so and so wrong. Okay. Now, this feedback was only provided about 72 hours before the final deadline for submission um, of the assignments. Okay. But uh, in the meantime, students had unlimited attempts um, to improve their scores. And I always kept the best score. Um, so, as a way, to help the students' grades. So let me show you how those assignments look like. So what you are seeing here is my uh, Blackboard course, okay, where my assignments have been released. And uh, for the students, I call those exercises extra practice to differentiate from the homework assignments that they were working in parallel. Again, I created nine assignments. Um, so they had an assignment in electron configuration, functional group, functional group recognitions, hybridization, geometry, orbitals participating in bond formation, counting sigma and pi bounds, skeletal structures, aster and base strength, classification of alcohols, carbon alcohols, amines, amides, and alkyl halides. So some of those assignments, for example, geometry, they were adaptive release and the same for those orbitals participating in covalent bond formation. So those two assignments, they are um, very close associated with the hybridization. So in order for those assignments to become available for the students, they needed to complete at least 75% of the hybridization assignment, okay? And then um, let me show you how those assignments look like. I'm entering here uh, electron configuration, okay? So essentially I provide my students with a question, okay? And instructions on how to answer the questions. And uh, I provided them with a periodic table and the off ball diagram. Okay, and the students were asked to uh, enter an answer and those assignments, they would be automatically graded. Okay, so let me show you here two of my questions. Okay, um, they were um, similar. And uh, I will show you now the functional group recognition. These assignments, I definitely needed to use a chemidraw to draw those larger structures. And the students were asked to uh, look at the structures and recognize the functional groups. Those are multiple choice type of questions. So they have to mark the functional groups that the molecules have. Okay. And um, um, another example of uh, an assignment, I'm going to show you the hybridization ones. This one's um, having uh, the students receiving more questions than most of the other assignments. And essentially there is a structure and an arrow pointing out to an atom and the students needed to uh, recognize the, uh, the hybridization for the, the, the indicated atom, okay? And uh, in the same, um, the same basic structures, uh, they would be asked about the geometry of atoms or orbitals participating in the covalent bonds for those atoms in different assignments. Now that you know how those assignments look like, I would like to share with you um, about the results that I found. So essentially what I did here is to work with my two course sections in the fall 2022, okay? So a total of 136 students, uh, they completed those assignments. So I tracked down those students um, as for how much they complete of those adaptive um, assignments and uh, the scores that they receive in total for all the nine assignments, okay? So they could receive a maximum of 10 points. And essentially what I did is track down the number of students um, in increments of one point. So for example, how many students receive between zero and one point? How many students receive between one and two points and so on, all the way until the students that completed fully the assignment, okay? 
And then um, I correlated those uh, students with the grades that they received for uh, my first exam. Okay, so since those uh, assignments, they were complete ahead of my first exam, um, I thought that mastering of those concepts would result in a better outcome on my first exam. And then a few things here uh, that became clear is that for those students that did not put any effort towards the, those assignments, so they complete between zero and one point in total, okay, for all of those nine assignments, the majority of those students did not do very well in this first exam. Okay, so of course, if the students are not practicing, I think that's a common expectation. Now, of course, that as instructor, I would like to see uh, the positive side of uh, the assignment. So I'm focusing here on the C's, B's, and A's. And essentially, we see that um, the highest concentration of those grades happen for the students that complete at least 60% of the total point assignments, okay? And one important thing is um, for those students that complete a lot of, um, most of those assignments, they had the, uh, the higher chance of obtaining an A or a B um, as a grade on that um, first exam, okay? So uh, next, what I did is I correlate um, the outcome of those assignments, those adaptive assignments with the grades received from my students uh, at the end of the course. So if those assignments aim at targeting the, the, the foundation, the students' foundations for organic chemistry, then in my mind, mastering um, those um, contents would help to boost their final grades. And a similar thing I saw for my first exam, the students that, um, many of the students that did not complete those assignments, they received poor grades at the end of the semester. And again, the highest percentages of C's, B's and A's happen for the students that complete at least 60% um, of the, those assignments. And again, the majority of my high grades happen for students that have between 90 and 100% of the total points for those assignments. So this leads us to a question. Since the students that are receiving high grades are also the ones that are completing the assignments, is this uh, that I'm seeing an effect of the assignments itself, or it is just because the students are practicing the concepts and it is something that could be equally achieved if the students are, for example, completing their homework? I definitively defend that practice is required to succeed in organic chemistry. And uh, um, in my observation, most of the students that completed those assignments, successfully completed the, these adaptive assignments, also successfully completed their homework assignments. So yes, I defend that the students that are, are making efforts to practice, they're having a better outcome for the course. However, okay, in a preliminary result, is when I compare the, uh, the students that are working uh, homework and these adaptive uh, questions, one interesting feature uh, was visible. So essentially, I look at these 136 students that took uh, my, my courses, completed my organic chemistry one in the fall semester, okay? And identify that 118 of those students complete at least 80% of the homework, okay? Um, while 81, 81 students complete at least 80% of those adaptive questions. So definitely I have more students working on homework than working um, on those adaptive questions that I proposed earlier in the semester. Okay, and then the next thing that I that I, I observe is the greatest distributions between the high grades distributions, A's, B's, and C's for both groups of students. So what I found out is when I compare the number of A's, B's, and C's for the students that complete 
the homework and uh, the students that complete those adaptive uh, uh, results, there is not a, a, a screaming difference between the number of A's, B's, and C's that I see, okay? So, and this is um, observable despite the fact that I have about 37 less students fully working on those adaptive exercises. So in other words, the fact that I see more students working on um, homework, um, in my mind, is expected to uh, create opportunities for a greater number, uh, larger number of A's, B's, and C's that, yes, I see, but on the other side, is not that many more students compared to the ones that complete the adaptive um, resources. So I would like to preliminary suggest here that uh, when considering um, the practice, the students that are practicing using the resources provided uh, for practice, they, it is um, th the total point is that the students receive for those adaptive results would be a better predictor of a great outcome for my students. I hope you enjoy my presentation. I would be glad to answer any questions that you may have. And uh, I hope to, um, you know, to, to hear from you if I can answer anything over the next um, few days. Thank you. I appreciate for your attention.